What's going on, y'all? This is Gruel Adventures, the latest version. This is similar to the one that was entered by Li Shitian in the Strixhaven League weekend just a few days ago. I've made some minor adjustments for my preferences. I like the Acroan War and Whirling Vortex over a couple of cards he was running, but otherwise it is the same list. Uh, the core being these six creatures up here being a very powerful early game to spare a sentinel ramps you some and helps you make more treasures with magda magda makes rimrock knight better and also makes treasures so you can do big stuff faster and of course edgewall innkeeper with these adventure creatures is a whole lot of value since the adventure creatures are good on their own and you get to draw cards for them it's it's good and then in our mid to late game we've got two Eskis Chariots which can be crewed by Magda and Dwarves to make more treasures which is pretty nice. It can also copy treasures and it's just a good value green card overall. Makes eight power and toughness when it comes down over three bodies which is pretty solid. A Crow and War, great against anyone running significantly large creatures. You can steal one of them and then you control how combat works the next turn. It's won quite a few battles for me, one copy of Garrick to have a little more diverse threats, and on the top we've got some Goldspan Dragons and Ember Cleaves for when we need to go over the top and have things to fetch if we ever get five treasures for Magda. In the mana base we've got the Pathways which make blue because we splashed Disdainful Stroke in the sideboard against Saltai mostly, anyone else running sweepers as well. Got one Hall of Oracles, which allows us to put plus one plus one counters on our creatures when we cast um, an instant or sorcery and have leftover mana. We can buff our creatures, kind of nice. All the adventure creatures, of course, are our instants and sorceries. And we've got some spell lands for removal and a bit of reach in Castle's Fury. In the sideboard, we've got Redcap Melee for. Mono Red and is it Dragon, Ox of Agonis for Rogues, the Acroan War for most creature decks, D Stroke and Rolling Vortex for Sultai, Clothis for where Reach is necessary or we want Graveyard Hate, and Gargaroth for mostly Mono Red and anyone that doesn't have an easy way to remove it. That's the deck, let's go try it out. Yeah, this hand is fine. We've got Sentinel into Sentinel Rimrock into Bone Crusher. Can't ask for much better than that. Against Mono Green, though, we might end up stomping on two. end up killing our sentinel on too. Nope, just an ooze. That I will pretty gladly stomp. I can play the other sentinel first. So I will do so. Ooze is pretty good in creature matchups where a bunch of creatures are going to die on both sides and gets bigger and gains life and all sorts of nonsense. There's an eddy which makes this bone crusher quite a bit better. I think we go for that here. Tap the eddy. Draw a card. Find another land so we can easily share it. Does our opponent have a henge in the last two cards? No, just a blizzard brawl. Okay. Yep. I take two. It's indestructible, so we can't buff with Rimrock Knight to kill the Mammoth. And then we will take the 6 here. That's fine. Goes back to being a 3-3 next turn. Does 
so our opponent have anything else to do? Love Strike Beast. Okay. Well, I can do that too. And since Chariot can't attack into the 5-5, five five, I think we're going to do that. And while we have the innkeeper down, let's make the backup 1-1 one, one first. Here's our own Love Struck Beast. We get to draw cards for it. You don't. Haha. Uh -huh. And let's just get the Rimrock Knight down as well. Draw our cards while we can. Leave the 5-5 five five up to block. Garrick, probably good here. Of course, our opponent's on top deck mode, and we've got plenty of gas left, so that's always nice. Yeah, Swarm Shambler is not something we're terribly concerned about. Let's see, the smashing will probably become relevant. Uh, Garrick can make our chariot better. see, do I get Garrick down, or do I get the Chariot down? I think it's the Chariot, because then it can attack next turn and start copying things. We might use this Shatter Skull Smashing if we get up to enough mana. And I'm fairly happy to wait here, though. Let's see. If they trade this Love Stark Beast, I guess we're fine. We have plenty of blockers if they want to attack us back. They don't really have great attacks either way. Now, of course, if I was planning to attack, I should have saved my mana to uh, prevent them from getting the information. Really, they're going to two-for-one themselves here. Interesting. Not sure about that play. Okay, there's an ooze. We will want to get rid of that quickly. turn. Oh, well, there's Embercleave. So if I Embercleave this chariot with plus three plus three, can I do that? So, no, I don't have enough mana to do that. So I shock this in, then I'm at eight mana. Four for Garrick, four for Cleave. Yes, I can do that if I shock in the smashing, which I don't really want to do. I'm at seven now, which is not enough to do the good stuff with that. I think we'll just cleave up here. We'll hold up the two twos to block. Start making our copies with the chariot. Embercleave is a large part of the reason you play Gruel over Mono Green. Our opponent is about to taste it. That'll be game one. Alright, against Mono Green, we definitely want the Acroan War. They don't have the best time dealing with Gargaroth, but it's not that difficult for them. We didn't see Gemraiser, but they probably run it, so I think Gargaroth is a better 5-drop than Goldspan Dragon, because Gemraiser just blocks Goldspan Dragon. For a Gargaroth, they need a 6-power creature to kill it, which is much more rare. Uh, I don't think we keep D-Stroke for Henge or anything like that. I think it's just... Bring in the Gargroth and the Acroan War, 
And what are we taking out? We have one more. We could cut a Smashing or a Fury on the draw. I think those are both pretty good in this game, though. If the board gets really gummed up, that Fury can help us find lethal, and Shatter Skull Smashing is often a two for one. Garrick is quite a bit of advantage. It might be the Chariot, because as a 4 4, it can't really attack into them much unless we have cleave like we did there but chariot is how we get to kill their creature with the acroan war all right we'll just take out another dragon call it good uh yeah this just does not do anything that is better. Do I put back a Magda? I guess so. Because I like these other cards too much. I need to hit land. play an ooze or something here we will stomp it but they don't so I think we go for Magda here they have something at instant speed they ram through gamers would appear so don't usually see ram through nowadays most people just run blizzard brawl and primal knight but they're off curve they don't get the love struck beast down which is good for us and eddie means we're not wasting our turn by just stomping that one one or not wasting the stomp by just casting bone crusher here we get to fully utilize our mana That's fine. Alright, they're going to kill Eddie. Yep. Nothing we can do to stop that. We will still kill their 1 1 here, so they will have some trouble attacking with their beast. And hopefully, we find a land. We do not. But I think getting Eddie down here is better than getting Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher doesn't block Love Struck Beast anyway. And getting that card draw will be very important, especially since our opponent has a Henge. They have a third removal spell here for Eddie. I don't think there's much we can really do in this game. three stone coil okay we do find the land so we could go for Garrick here Garrick is more mana efficient than the bone crusher but our Eddie might not live to see another turn so let's go for bone crusher now That's a problem. They have now got quite a bit more power and toughness than we do. Cannot jump with our Bone Crusher there. And a news, and another card. Well, one of the cards I took out was Masked Vandal. Looks like that's going to bite us in this particular matchup. Okay, that's going to be game two. But mono green is not that common, so I don't believe keeping Mass Vandal in the sideboard for it is reasonable. 
Am I changing anything? I don't think so. I think our choices were fine. We just had a bit of a slow start there, and we were on the draw. Back on the play should be better. It's not great, but I think it's keepable. We've got Magda, we've got Chariot, we've got Stomp, plenty of good things. Our opponent has a one drop to stop us from having fun with Magda. might do here is stomp a 1-1 one -one and then put a counter on Magda. No, Magda's going to die. A one and a half for one there. That's fine. We find a green source. Swim Shambler is very annoying. Well, let's play our green source. I don't think we want to waste the stomp here. So it is our most mana efficient option. Well, yes, casting Bone Crusher is our most mana efficient option. And then we slam Chariot, but that's not much good into Lovestruck Beast. We one and a half ourselves with the Rimrock Knight. I think we can go for the other Magda. Let's try and get our value engine started and hope they don't have all the removal they could possibly want once again. Yeah, I'm not blocking that. Okay. can play out the chariot and just let whatever lovestruck beast things they have happen or I could attack with Magda and use Rimrock Knights to kill the lovestruck beast if they have another henge we need to stop that since we don't have cleave right now so I think we attack here they do block, we stop them from henging without much cost to ourselves, and if they don't, we get our treasure. And here we can Rimrock Knight and put a counter on it, which I guess is decent. save our chariot for when they don't have a 5-5. Five five. Another Swarm Shambler's fine. Those do not outsize us. Three is a bit annoying. Basically makes Stomp worthless. Yeah, can't block. Might as well go for that. Although we could use Stomp to put a counter on a creature and just do 2 damage to face. 
don't think that's terribly efficient though. But I guess Stomp, Hall of Oracles, Second Rimrock Knight is one of our most efficient plays. Let's go for that. Also, that stick means they probably have Snakeskin Veil. Do this pre-combat so we get the one extra point of damage if they don't block. And now we're pretty much trying to race. I'm hoping we find an Embercleave before they can cast a Henge. Razor turns that into a 5-5, five five. still just trades with our bigger Rimrock Knight though. And they're still losing the race if they attack with it. There's an Embercleave. Can't complain. Trading that one is fine. Let's just go over the big one. I don't think they have anything that keeps this Swarm Shambler alive. Or kills my Rimrock Knight in response here for one mana. So if we didn't cleave this Rimrock Knight, they could put a counter on their Gem Razor with the Swarm Shambler ability, and then we'd lose the Rimrock Knight. And not kill their Gem Razor, I mean. But yeah, we got there. GG. Mm, I want to. Wait, we have Sentinel. It's fine. We can keep one landers with Sentinel. As long as it doesn't die turn one. No Frostbite. Alright, not Frostbite. Okay, so we get two more bodies on board. Even without having the second land. Then next turn we can cast... Rimrock Knight, perhaps, and try to draw into land. If our opponent sees that strategy, they will try to kill the Sentinel. They don't want to trade their Hall Monitor. No blocks. Alright. Rimrock Knight is not great against an aggressive draw like this one. But we do need to find land, and I don't think any other play is doing that. Nope. Ten cards in, one land. cards in, one land. Let's block the hall monitor here. That's the best trade for us. Fireblade Charger would also kill Eddie, the other two just eat our token. There's a land, which means I can drop a 5-5. 
which is pretty good. There's another land. Might still be in this. Rimrock Knight can't block. Might as well attack. We have another Love Struck Beast to follow up. As long as they don't have like a Torbran here or an Akroan War. Alright, that's a Torbran. But the Love Struck Beast still eats anything they attack with. And we killed their Hall Monitor, so they can't stop that. Frostbite with our Sentinel. That hurts. Absolute perfect use of all cards available to them. We don't have any way to deal with Torbrand, so we're just going to go to game two here. Alright, bring in our ways to deal with Torbrand, which are Red Got Melee and the Akroan War. Gargaroth can come in here too. Gold Span Dragon's a bit slow. Rimrock Knight kind of also is. Garrick definitely is. Let's just take out all the dragons. I don't think they're nearly as good here as our earlier plays or the Crone Wars. And we'll drop one Rimrock Knight. I like to be able to block. Lesson of the day, don't keep one landers in standard. Don't keep zero landers in any format. This is better. We'll drop off the Gargaroth because it doesn't do anything for a while. And our other cards are very good. I guess I don't really need to attack here. I'm better off playing both of the adventures. Okay, they go for their stomp, so I'll stomp in response. Alright, Ember Cleave is nice. Just need one more land to get there. 5-5 five, five is good against Mono Red. Get some attacks in. Alright, need another red source. Are you gonna kill my 1-1? One, one? Or the 5-5? Five, five? Are you a Soul Seer Gamer? Are a Soul Seer Gamer. That's fine. Bone Crusher. If they actually add anything to the board, we have the Akroan War. If they don't, we're waiting on another red source for this Ember Cleave. I would prefer to get a Torbran or something, but I might end up a Crown Warring this Bone Crusher. There's another red source. Though that's also a way to get rid of the creature we a Crown War. But let's see if we cleave that up next turn, that's 10 damage. I think that's reason enough to play the Castle's Cliffs. I don't really want this game to go long enough that them getting the creature back after the Akron War goes off is going to matter. Okay. So if we attack all in here, we can stomp the Anax as well, assuming they block the 1 1. 
No, we can't. We don't have the red mana. And that's not how math works anyway. Yeah, that was a waste. We can play both sides of our own Bone Crusher here. But now we're better off just cleaving. And unless they can remove it somehow, we should be able to find lethal next turn. Especially since this Anax has to attack. Alright, doesn't appear that they have... Oh no, they get it back this turn. That's how that card works. So, yeah, we have to play our Bone Crusher here and equip our Cleave to it. And hope they don't have Frostbite. They do not. They might have their own cleave, though. Which, if they do here, that's more than we can handle. They do not. I attack. All right, game three. So you might be thinking cloth is for the life gain here, but doing nothing on turn 3 when I could be playing at 5-5 five five is not great at all. Our more expensive spells just win the game. Our cheaper spells are necessary for the curve. Don't think we can really change anything here. Uh, yeah. It's a good hand. Got turn one Sentinel for the third game running. After going all three games against Mono Green without a one drop. It's not going to survive though, of course. Let's see, if we play Magda, it just doesn't attack into the Bone Crusher that they're going to play next turn. If we play Eddie, we only use one mana this turn, which is not great. So I think it's got to be Magda. I guess another option there was Heart's Desire in to put a counter on it. But I don't think that's great either. Maybe they'll remove Magda rather than making the more efficient play of casting their Bone Crusher. That's fine by me. Now I can Innkeeper Magda, I can Innkeeper Heart's Desire. I think it's. Innkeeper Heart's Desire here. Then next turn we can cast the Levstruck Beast. Hopefully draw some cards. Now the Bone Crusher comes down. Here's the Levstruck Beast. I draw. Not final end, so Castle's Cliffs comes down. No attacks. Okay, another one for one, that's fine. They 
kill Eddie, I'll be a bit more sad. Third Bone Crusher is not good for us. And no more green source, so we can't Eddie into Love Struck Beast here. In that case, I think it's best to just slam the chariot. Start getting value. Uh, I might end up jumping with this 1 1. I don't think the 1 point is going to matter from this stage. Fourth Bone Crusher. Shuffler's fine. Let's go ahead and crew this up. You never know. The only way we get punished for it is if the last card in their hand is Soul Seer, which does not appear to be the case. And that's enough to keep them from attacking with that Bone Crusher. That's interesting. Alright, we find a land, so now we can eddy into Lovestruck Beast, into Crew Chariot. And I think that's enough value to throw away the Chariot. Shatter Skull Smashing could be good here. By enough value, I mean killing their Bone Crusher and getting another 2-2. Once again, I suppose I should have held this play until afterwards, but it's fine. Yeah, Bone Crusher Central. But they don't attack into Love Struck Beast. Stomping them is not great. So we'll just get our card out of this Bone Crusher. Though, stomping means I can get a counter from the Hall of Oracles. Let's see. Alright, we'll try that. Do I want to go all in here, though? If they take Ember Cleave off the top then, we're screwed. So no, we'll stomp face. And then cast our Bone Crusher. Draw our card. Then get our counter. On to Love Struck Beast, I suppose. So it survives in Ember Cleaved Bone Crusher. Two more mana to Shatter Skull, two Bone Crushers. Alright, looks like they're gearing up for an attack here. Which probably means Cleave. Uh, do I want to give up my 1 1 for 4 life? I think so. Oh, it's not Cleave. That's rather favorable for us then, I believe. We could just smashing to kill this Bone Crusher, but I think we'll get more value than that later. Let's keep drawing while we have our Eddie. Never blocking with Eddie. Might as well attack. Didn't have Ember Cleave last turn. And they still don't have it. 
just uh, mailbox. Let's see, how much is it to just kill this bone crusher with smashing? That's five mana, yeah. So I could smash the bone crusher, put a counter on Magna and stomp face, or I could just cast this bone crusher and smash their bone crusher. I think casting this bone crusher has got to be better. Get more cards. So if we attack with Magda here, we can use the extra mana to get a counter. So I think we will do so. One, two, three, right here. Uh, sacrifice this. Do not use the Hall of Oracles. Up our bone crusher. We might just trade the bone crusher for this faceless haven anyway, but I think that's fine. Getting it out of range of dragon fire is significant. They don't have the mana to ember cleave a haven here. Obviously, I'm not going to two against Mono Red. And that's a Gargaroth, so that should be game. Let's just use our cards to their ballist here. a 7-7 seven, seven Gargaroth, and I don't think there's anything they can do about that unless they run a Crowanwar. If they do have a Crowanwar, we're in a bit of a tight spot. Torbrand is not going to get it done. Our Crowanwar will. Good game. Trigger, trigger, trigger. And die. Nice. And yes, that game got us into diamond. Not too shabby. Alright, back to go over the list. I very much like this build. Uh, we got a lot of use out of that Hall of Oracles. Even though it's just a one of, it comes up quite a bit. It's pretty nice. The number of lands was fine, except for that one very questionable hand I kept against Mono Red. The Despair Sentinel Magda interaction is disgusting, even though we didn't get to do it today. The two of them did plenty on their own. Adventures are great. I like the sideboard. Uh, didn't have any matches against Saltai on video here, but the three Disdainful Strokes, two Roiling Vortex, I find is a good number of cards to devote to Saltai in the sideboard. Uh, the Crown War is fantastic against all creature decks, and that's really all there is to say. Goldspan Dragon is a versatile top-end card that's pretty good against most everybody. I often cut it, though, in games 2 and 3 to bring in the more specialized cards, because you can't really cut out the, like, what is it, 24 cards here. These are pretty pretty uncuttable. They're just fantastic all the time. They are what carries your early game. You can't not have an early game if you're playing Gruul Aggro. And Chariot is a lot of fun, gets a lot of value. Good stuff. Uh, that is... Yeah, that'll be it for today. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.